Three Houses class system is, in my opinion, the most liberating and open-ended class branching system Fire Emblem has ever had. While at the same time, disappointingly restrictive the deeper and deeper I get with it. It's one of the few mechanical issues I have with this game. The goal of this video is simply to weigh the positives with the negatives and how I found those throughout my playthrough with the game so far. I'm also going to be bringing up Fire Emblem Fates as a comparison with that class system to this one. And by the way, if this is your first video of mine, hello! My name is Gast, a longtime veteran of the series and I really, really love this game. I would argue it's the best game in the series as an overall package, but like most games, there are some issues. The class system in Three Houses is stellar, boasting a wide variety of classes, each with unique skill masteries and professor level requirements to get there, requiring the player to commit to certain weapon types and classes under a limited amount of time in order to get the combination they want. Add that with the instructing mechanic, and you have the power to plan out your entire run for a single or entire team. Mix that in with who you want to recruit on a run, and what you end up are dozens and dozens of possible team comps and skill sets. For example, do you want to take an already offensive powerhouse like Dimitri and further add on to his destructive power? Turn him into an enemy phase one-man army by pathing him to a mercenary, warrior, and warmaster for vantage, wrath, quick repost, and critical plus 20. Throw on sword fare with a refined Wo Dao and a battalion that increases his might and crit, and voila, he will crit anything first no matter what phase, so long as you hit that HP requirement threshold. It's an extremely rewarding mechanic in this game because it rewards you for planning on how you're going to allocate your limited XP in battles and limited amount of instructor gauge, while also having a proper grasp of the rest of the game's mechanics. Instructor supporting, giving gifts and lost items to, and feeding your students specifically when they are unmotivated so you can consistently have them ready to hone in on their goals you set out for them. Thinking this deeply also requires you to properly understand gardening, fishing, and dispensing renown to the goddess statues for your supply of motivation and quote, and EXP rate boosts respectively. All of Three Houses mechanics tie into each other so finely that once you finally achieve that unit goal you set out to right from the beginning of the game, you can immediately see the fruits of your labor. Where other Fire Emblem games boast great replayability because of their diverse casts and class systems, Three Houses combines all of its numbered mechanics together to create a much more involved and satisfying experience. Except, maybe not as well as Fire Emblem Fates. Fates is in a class of its own when it comes to replayability, but in the interest of staying on track about this being a Three Houses video, I'll keep this segment quick. In my opinion, Fates' class system and replayability was bananas. Not only did it have a monstrous cast of characters, each with their own unique personal abilities, but the support system was tied in to further add depth to how reclassing worked. Not every character could support with each other, but each character had a chance to reclass into whatever class they wanted based on A ranking with friendship seals and S ranking with partner seals, along with their own second seals. Collectively, the amount of directions a single character could take with supporting someone else meant that literally every character had the chance to reclass into anything except for, you know, songstresses and beast classes. Not only that, but the children mechanic added even more depth by giving the player the control and creating their own child units. The same kind of long-term planning was required for Fates as it is for Three Houses. I'm not saying one class system was better than the other. Three Houses did some things better than Fates did, and Fates did some things better than Three Houses did. Personally? Even though I'm praising Fates right now, I kind of like Three Houses more because of how much more involved it feels without relying on child units being shoved into the game. However, Three Houses, while extremely liberating and satisfying as far as reclassing goes, has annoyingly arbitrary restrictions that seriously hamper on my experience. Big frustration number one, gendered classes. I don't know what intelligence systems is thinking here, Restricting classes by gender is obviously limiting, but female units straight up lose access to not just certain late game classes, but also those late game classes mastery skills. Sure would be great for Byleth to become a war master, get innate access to axe and fist fair and crit plus 20, sign me up. Oh no, you're a girl Byleth, that's too bad. Is your attack speed high enough that you aren't getting doubled by the enemy assassin, but low enough that you'll never be able to double anything on player phase? 
Well, do I have the class mastery skill for you. Darting blow. Ooh, sorry man. That's for girls only. Male characters will be able to class into Brawlers, Grapplers, Heroes, and War Masters, but they won't be able to class into Pegasus Knights nor Gremories. Female units get only two exclusive classes to male units who get four. It honestly wouldn't be so frustrating if these mastery classes weren't good, but they are. Heroes have innate Swordfare advantage, a combination of skills that would honestly work great with units with shaky defense, which there are plenty of, especially for female units. But even worse, losing out on War Master means there is no way for a female to get Quick Repost. Quick Repost being great for stocky units who don't naturally have the attack speed to ever follow up on the fast, squishy enemy units that they are partially designed to hard counter. On the flip side, male units aren't allowed to use Darting Blow and can't access Gremory. Arguably the best magic class in the game as it instantly allows double uses for any spell of any type. So if you're male Byleth, you either get 3 uses of Aura and 6 uses of Ragnarok, or 6 uses of Aura and 3 uses of Ragnarok, but never both. I would argue that females lose out on more than males do, both in the quantity of the classes and the quality of the skills, but still, why? Why place this restriction at all? There's plenty of replay value already. They even allow males to be dancers in this game for once. And before you say anything, yes, Fates does have gendered classes, but the only difference between Maid and Butler is their personal skill. And honestly, there is some more significant gender changes, like Great Master and I think, like Great Master and Shrine Maiden. But still, it's not a huge difference. Nothing like this. And I would argue that these smaller differences are inconsequential to the overall experience, and certainly doesn't weigh it down like it does in this game. So why implement them in three houses? How does this enhance the experience? The second major problem I have with the class system is the master classes. They're not terrible, but they're not doing anything special for the most part. These souped up classes are stacked with class abilities that will mostly just juice up your offensive output. For example, a Dark Knight will give you Dark Tome Fair, Black Tome Fair, and Kanto. A Holy Knight will give you White Tome Fair, Kanto, and Terrain Resistance, which is a step up from Paladin, which gives Kanto Terrain Resistance and, hold on, Lance Fair. So unless you've S plus Ferdinand in Lances, getting him to Holy Knight will actually lose you out on Lance Fair, and you'll be instead given an assortment of decent white magic with white Tome Fair, which depending on your playstyle, may or may not be worth the change up. Master classes kind of give and take like this. Mortal Savant is a fantastic class that will unlock the destructive potential of Felix, whose hidden talent will make him more of a viable black magic user, and it will also give someone like Catherine some more options to take out heavy armors with Bolganone and Ragnarok. Except, in this offensive powerhouse class, they also suffer a minus 10 speed growth? I can understand this minus growth happening to Great Knights and Holy Knights, but a class geared towards complete offensive domination? Uh, I don't mean to devolve this into a pedantic ramble, like Wyvern Lords and Falcon Knights and Gremories are clear step ups from their preceding class, but it feels like they could have done a lot more here. The class masteries for these master classes are pretty disappointing as well. Aside from War Master's Quick Repost and maybe Mortal Savant's Warding Blow, I'm not sure how much mileage you're going to be getting with Defiant skills that trigger at minus 25% HP. I believe Fates did comparatively better for advanced skills. Malignites were flying dark mages with axes and had access to Savage Blow and Trample. Master of Arms had Seal Strength and Life and Death. Merchants had Profiteer and Spendthrift. I know the translation isn't 100% doable, but I do believe that Three Houses could have added a lot more varied classes for the Master Tier. Additionally, I personally don't find throwing fairs for every Master Class that creative at all. Yes, of course, you can add a class-specific Lance Fair with a personal Lance Fair, but like, cool, I guess. <laughs> You're just stacking on offense. Why not add these pre-existing skills from other games in? Master classes aren't bad, they're just boring. They're mostly souped up versions of their preceding class, which is what you would expect, but compared to Fates, it's severely lacking in creativity. Can you still get creative with the master classes and the master abilities here? Of course, but this tier feels empty to me. Don't get me wrong here. Three Houses class system is easily one of, if not, my favorite system in Fire Emblem. It is so close to being perfect in its ability to encourage smart play, planning, and understanding of the rest of the game's mechanics to succeed, but the gendered classes give unfair restrictions to an already restrictive late game class variety. 
and maybe they'll add more masterclasses for DLC, and I certainly hope that once these more difficult modes come out, we will have more skills to play around with. But this is one of the few instances where Three Houses gets oh so close to perfect. Deuces.